starting with taking your negatives and eventually getting them into a large print format. Okay? This is what you guys are going to be physically turning into me, are the prints. Okay? So all of this information is on Schoology under handouts. Uh, there's a handout that's called Darkroom How-To Tips and More. Um, so you can kind of refer to that. Okay, I also have hard copies of the handout under these binders that are in the little bookcase next to my desk. If you want to bring this physically into the dark room, you can. Because with your iPads, they can't go in the dark room. Okay? At least you have this hard copy. So, so I'm going to start off by showing you guys how to cut down your paper. Okay, so right now your paper is 8 by 10 inches. Okay? You will be doing prints that are way smaller than that. They're going to be 5 by 7, which is about EA big, and then 3.5 by 5, which is about EA big. Okay? So you're going to have to cut your paper properly. Okay? Um, so as I mentioned before, you have to be really careful with how you cut your paper because you only get the one half. And if you run out, you have to buy a new one. Um, so doing the cutting the right way will help you utilize all of your paper to its fullest. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate over here. I brought a paper cutter out for you guys. Look at. Okay. So with your paper, when you're cutting it, you're always going to hold it horizontally. Okay. Always hold your paper horizontally. Okay. The trimmer is in the dark room is on that little island. So you'll put the paper in horizontally, and your first cut is going to be at five inches. Okay. So there's a ruler up top that has the five inches on it, but I went ahead and in the dark room I put tape down on the actual cutter with all the different measurements for you to kind of make it easier to see. Okay. But five inches, you'll line up your paper, make sure it's butted up all the way to the top of the ruler. You'll hold it and slide. And that's going to cut your paper down in half. Okay. For your next cut, you're going to take the two pieces, hold them together, horizontal. You'll move it under the plastic bar, and then you're going to line it up to seven inches. And you cut. So what I have are this. What are these? Test strips. Test strips. So these you can use as your test strips. These two pieces of paper are five by seven inches. So when you do prints that are five by seven, that's it. You get two of them per sheet. Okay, you don't have to do any more cutting. Okay. But if you need another, a smaller paper that's three and a half by five, you're gonna cut your paper one more time. You're still gonna hold the paper horizontally. Move it under the bar. And line it up to three and a half. And now I have four three and a half by fives. Okay, so all of this paper can be used for prints or test strips. Okay. Questions? Five, seven, three and a half. Five, seven, three and a half. What are my numbers? Five, seven, three and a half. Perfect. And you have to do it in that order. If you don't, it's going to get botched up. Okay, and which way do you hold your paper? Okay. Questions? So, I suggest cutting about three to four sheets of paper at a time so that we don't have to keep going to the paper cutter every few minutes. Uh, but don't cut any more than three or four just because you might need to have the bigger five by sevens or smaller five by fives. So, get a little bit at a time. When you do cut your paper, make sure you put it back into the envelope in the back so it's safe and sound in there. Don't just leave it out in the open because if the alarms go off, then your paper will get exposed. Okay. Okay. Uh, so once your paper is cut, um, you'll be able to actually get started. Okay. So getting started, step one is picking out your negative. Okay, so after you do your contact sheet, I suggest looking at your contact sheet and deciding on which pictures you want to print out. Um, for each project, you'll have a different amount of pictures you have to do. For the very first one, it'll be four. The next one, I think 
a six or eight. So it really depends. You need to look at your assignment sheets to see how many are required. Okay, but you'll look at your contact sheet. You'll pick them out. Yes. For the contact sheet, will the entire piece of paper sink for so much room this time? Yes. So if you have a sheet that fills the entire negative sleeve, you'll have just a full sheet of paper. So I know some of you had one straggler strip, um, so you can swap it out with maybe one that isn't your favorite. Okay, but all you will need for that roll is just the one. Okay. So with your contact sheets, I suggest circling, marking, putting a post-it on it, um, just so you know which pictures you like. A lot of times students will come up to me and they'll show me their contact sheet and ask for suggestions, and I'm more than happy to look at your images and kind of help you narrow it down to a few. So once you have your picture picked out, you'll take your negative out of the sleeve. So right now, as I'm touching my negative, what's getting on it? Fingerprints. So if I have a fingerprint on my negative, and I go to blow my negative up so it's bigger, what's going to happen to my fingerprint? It's going to get bigger. Get bigger too. Okay, so we need to clean it. Okay, so over at this counter, okay, normally it's going to be over here. It's a little like right now. Um, but there's this basket that has film cleaner in it. So, there's a little bottle that has Q-tips in it, and then a little clear plastic bottle that has film cleaner. Now the film cleaner is basically just rubbing alcohol, but it's going to clean all the grease, oil, fingerprints, get all the gunk off of your negatives. So what you'll do is you'll take the Q-tip, you'll dip it into the film cleaner, and on the shiny side of your negatives, that's what you're cleaning. The dull side, fingerprints don't really stick to that because of the texture on it. But the shiny side, you'll definitely see them there. So you'll just go and with the Q-tip, just clean, clean, clean the negative you want. And a lot of times students will clean the entire strip or maybe a few of them if you're doing multiples from there, but you don't really have to do that. Okay. Um, really only focus on the negative that you're using. So the film cleaner dries fairly quickly, but if you want, you can use the dry side of the Q-tip and kind of go over it as well. Okay. With the Q-tips, they do last a while, so if you see that it's still pretty clean, you can just go ahead and put it back in the bottle. If it's really gross and grimy, just toss it. Uh, with the film cleaner, make sure that you put the cap back on it. Okay, This stuff evaporates very, very quickly overnight. Okay, so make sure that you close it back up. From there, always hold your negative by the edges. Okay, so that way you won't get fingerprints back on it. Questions? Yeah. Um, so how does the at your enlargers, you have some essential equipment. So you have your boards for doing your test strips. Okay. Then you also have a negative carrier and something called an easel. So each enlarger has a negative carrier and an easel. They're all numbered along with the enlarger station. So make sure that the numbers match up. Okay? There is no reason for someone to have two easels or three negative carriers. Okay? There's one at each in the beginning of class, so it should stay that way. Okay? So always double check and make sure. So the negative carrier is what your negative is going to go into. This is its holder. Okay. So when you open it up, it's kind of like a big waffle iron. Okay. When you open it on one side, you'll see these silver little thumbtack looking tabs. Your film is going to slide underneath those tabs, shiny side up. Okay, so just like your paper, shiny side up. From there, you can go ahead and close the negative carrier. And you'll be able to move your film back and forth. And the picture that you want to print out should be the one that's inside the window. Okay. And this is also why I had you guys cut it into strips of five, so that way you can easily maneuver your film. 
if you only have one picture and that's your entire length, you won't be able to get to it to move it around. Same with two or three frames. So, and we'll just go, move it so the one picture you want is inside the frame. From here, your negative carrier, carrier is going to go inside of the enlarger. Okay. So with the enlarger, between the two accordions, there's this little metal flap that opens up. It looks kind of like a duck's mouth. Okay. Um, your negative carrier is going to go inside of that flap. Okay. When it goes in, there's this opening at the bottom that the negative carrier is going to drop into. So when you look at the negative carrier, one side is completely flat. The other side has this beveled ring to it. That ring is what plops into that opening. So make sure that when you're putting your neg negative carrier in, that bump is facing down. So when this gets placed in, it drops in, and then it's dirty. Okay. Otherwise, if you put it upside down, your negative carrier is just going to move around all over the place. Um, if you're having trouble opening the flap, what might happen is the top half of the enlarger might be squished all the way down. Um, there is a knob up top that kind of closes it. So you can see that it's not really opening. If that is the case, just move it all the way up. This will not affect what your picture looks like. It's just a pain in the butt when it's all the way down. So don't really mess with that dial unless you need to raise it back up. works. We've got the light up top. So the light shines through the negative, then continues on through the lens, and the lens is what projects your picture down onto the table. Okay. So you're going to be taking your easel, okay, and this is where your photo paper is going to end up going. Okay, You're going to be using the easel to hold your paper, but also to size your image. Okay. So with the easel, there's a lot of these little frames in there, they're different sizes. So on one side we have a bigger frame that's for 8 by 10 this size. Okay. You guys really won't be doing 8 by 10s unless you want to. Photo 2 and up, they typically will do the larger ones. But you guys are going to be focusing on the 5 by 7 and then the 3 and a half by 5. So those are our two sizes. There is also a little wall in size, but that's a little too small for you guys. So, but those are the two. So what you'll end up doing is you'll take your easel, depending on which size you want, you want that size to have the image being projected down on it. So when you're projecting your image, you're going to see that the size is going to be either too big or too small. And so you need to fix that. So to do that, Make your light the very, very brightest it can be. Super, super bright. Okay? That way you can really see what your image looks like. Okay? So brightest light, and you'll see your image projected down. And then your goal is to have the size so it just overflows beyond the frame a little bit. So to change your size, you're going to use the crank on the other side that lifts the entire and larger up and down. So if you want your picture bigger, you're going to move the enlarger up. If you want it smaller, you move the enlarger down. Okay, so just like the overhead projector, if it's really close to the screen, you'll have a teeny tiny picture. If it's far away, it's bigger. Same process. So you'll size it so it overflows the frame just a little bit. And then you need to focus it. So to focus your image, there's the dials on the bottom. There's one on either side of the enlarger, but when you turn them, you'll see the bottom half of the enlarger moving. This is your focus. So you'll turn the dial one way, the other way, you'll see it get blurrier and focus. So you'll just turn it until your image is sharp. Okay. You can only focus images that start off in focus. So if you take a picture that's originally blurry, there's no way to fix it. Okay, so you have to start with a really good sharp negative. Focus, focus, focus. When you focus the first time, you'll see that your size is going to change dramatically. 
So it might end up being bigger or smaller than what it started off as. So that means you'll have to go back and resize it. When you go to resize it, you'll have to refocus. And then you might have to resize it and then refocus it again. Okay, but it won't be as dramatic. Every time you size and focus, it's going to even out more and more. So it won't be that drastic. So typically, you only have to do it about two times. When you're doing this, remember, you have to have it at the brightest light so you can really, really see what you're doing. Questions? Okay. So once your image is sharp, it's the correct size, you'll be able to turn your brightness down. Okay? Because if you were to put a test strip down at the very brightest, what do you think is going to happen to your test strip? What's it going to look like? To be black or really really dark because okay? that's just too much light for it okay? so you'll turn your brightness down and this is going to vary for each negative because you may have noticed some of your negatives are really dark some of them are really light so it's going to uh, vary between them you want the brightness so you can kind of see the picture but you kind of can't you kind of can it's like this weird in-between limbo of seeing the picture and not being able to see it. Um, and we'll go into the dark room and I'll show you guys what that actually looks like so you can um, have a visual of that. Okay. So, turn brightness down, turn your light off, and then you'll be able to make your test strip. Okay. So, with your test strip, you're going to place it into the easel. Okay, make sure that you're still using the easel for your test strip. Because that height difference from the board to where the top of the easel is can change your focus. Okay, so make sure it's correct. Take your board. What are you going to set your timers to? Three seconds. Three seconds. Click, click, click. All the way across. And then you will have a test strip. <coughs> So your test strips are going to look really similar to the ones that you did for your contact sheets, your magazine grams. Okay, they go light to dark, they're divided up by the sections, and okay, the only difference is you have just one picture being showcased. Okay. You're going to be making a lot of test strips. Okay. Every picture you do, you have to make a new test strip. If you change the size of your image, you have to make a new test strip. If you change the brightness of your light, you make a new test strip. If you add or change a filter, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you have to make a new test strip. If it's a new day, new test strip. New and larger, new test strip. Pretty much whenever you do a significant change, you have to make a new test strip. Okay? It will save you on your paper in the end. So, so your test strips tell you a lot of different things. The first one is going to tell you what your exposure is. If it's too dark or too light. So is your lighting adequate for your picture? If it's too dark or too light, you can easily change that by changing your brightness or changing your time. Um, the next thing your test strip can tell you is if your picture is in focus. Okay, so you can easily see if it's sharp or not. If it's blurry, you can go back and adjust your focus. The third thing your test strip does is it tells you your contrast. So contrast is a separation of black and white. How much of it you have and how much grays you have. So there are two different types of contrast we have. High contrast and low contrast. So high contrast images have lots of white and lots of black. And then very little in between. Well, this is my high contrast. Okay. Lots of white, lots of black, very little range of gray in between. The problem with high contrast is that you start to lose detail in your highlights and your shadows. Okay. The white areas have blown out. So if you ever took a picture of the sun and everything's really white, it's kind of the same thing. Okay. So high contrast sometimes can look really cool if you're going for the artistic route, but it needs to really be an intentional thing. On the other end, we have low contrast. So low contrast has gray, gray, 
gray, more gray, and a little bit more gray. Oh, and then some more gray. Okay, it has very little pure black and pure white. So with the low contrast, your image is going to look really flat. Your details, you'll see some details, but you won't really get the full three-dimensional effect of it. So your images will look bland, it'll look as though they're in a fog, they're not going to be as exciting. So your goal is to find a happy medium where you have pure black, pure white, and all of the grays in the middle. Print in the middle is a pretty decent contrast. And you want that really, really nice range. Do you guys see the difference between the three different images? Okay. So your goal is to have a good contrast. Okay. So the way to do that in the darker is by using something called filters. So these are our filters. Okay? They come in all sorts of different colors that range from a yellow and orange all the way to magentas. Okay? The filters are located over by my desk. So if you guys turn around and look, there's a cabinet that says filters. When you open that up, there's a series of boxes with numbers on them, and inside the boxes are our filters. Okay? Um, the filters range from zero to five and they go in half increments. Okay, so we have zero, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, so on and so forth. Okay. When you're trying to figure out your contrast, it's really important to pay attention to the number. Because a different number will give you a different type of contrast. Okay. So in general, when you have no filter in your larger, that's the equivalent of a two and a half filter. Okay. So right in the middle of zero and five. No filter, it's like having a two and a half. If you want more contrast, you can go up in filter number. So three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. If you need less contrast, you're going to go down to number. Two, one and a half, five, you're going to have a huge difference in your contrast. But if you go from two and a half to a three, you're going to have just a little bit of a difference. Figuring out your contrast is one of the trickiest things when you're starting off. It does take some time to kind of train your eye to really see kind of the subtle differences. Um, so when you have your test strip, I suggest, you know, asking your friend for an opinion. You can find me and show me your test strip, and I'll kind of figure out where you're at contrast-wise. And if you need a little bit more, a lot less, kind of where you're at with that. So with the filters, when you decide on your correct filter, you go ahead, you'll grab one. And with these, sometimes they get watermarks on them or they get a little dusty. So you'll have to kind of clean them off a little bit. Only clean the filters with water. Only water. Okay, so you can run them under the sinks, dry them with paper towels. Only water. If you use the film cleaner on it, it's going to strip that pink gel stuff off the filter, and then it's no longer usable. Okay, so make sure you only use water. With your filters, they're going to be placed right on top of your negative carrier, like this. Okay, so they're just going to be hanging out on top. Make sure that the filter is covering your entire frame. If it's halfway on, then you'll have half with more contrast, half without, 
and then a big white line in the middle. So make sure that it's all aligned. Okay? And the whole thing you'll carefully place back into the enlarger. Questions on that? Okay. When you add a filter, your lighting is going to change because you're adding some sort of layer that's going to block some light. So you might have to go a little bit brighter on your enlarger just to make it visible. Okay? If you do a test strip and you see your test strip is all white, don't assume it's the wrong filter. It just means you need more light. Okay? So filters in. Go ahead, make a new test strip. Hopefully, we'll have a better result. Okay? You'll know it's good when you have solid black, solid white, and all the pretty grays in the middle. Okay. So when your test strip looks good, you'll be able to come out to the real light and evaluate it to figure out which section is your magic numbered area. So with the test strips, one thing I found that's easy to kind of figure out um, your right section is to kind of fold your test strip down at all the different sections so it's like an accordion. And then you can just fold everything over, and then you're just looking at one individual section, as opposed to looking at the whole thing at once. Okay, so this way, you can really kind of tunnel vision in on what could be good. Just looking at this structure, it's probably my good section. So I'll count from the lightest, one, two. Two times my timer. If my timer set at three, it'd be six. six. So I'll go ahead, change my timer to six seconds, and then I can make my final print. So with the final print, you will be using your larger paper. So the three and a half or the five by seven. So when you're putting the paper in, do not move the easel. Because if you move the easel, and then you go to move it back, do you think it's still going to be aligned properly? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so make sure your easel stays put. And all you're going to do is lift up the top half of the frame. Okay. So when you open this up, you'll see that there's these little tabs on the surface. Your paper is going to kind of butt up against those tabs, and then you'll be able to close it. And that's going to line up your paper perfectly. The paper is a little bit bigger than the frame, so you're going to get a nice white outline around your picture. Okay. Put the paper in, turn the timer on, one, two, three, however long, light turns off, and then you develop. And then you will have a beautiful and wonderful final print. Okay. So now we're going to head into the dark room. I'm